Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to News Fist. I have been slightly delayed indeed. I actually died from the flu. Of course, I had the flu. I have died, but fortunately, through the reimagining of the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab, I have been chosen to be reanimated so that my voice can continue to go out to the people and I can serve their twisted agenda. When I asked Klaus Schwab why me, why he chose to me to be reimagined and resurrected, he said apparently that it was important that uh, they control both sides, and apparently I am just the kind of person that they want to attract all the crazy people together in one place so they can be vilified. So, I mean, you know, I'm very, very grateful. Obviously, uh, you know, some of my body still isn't working quite right. Uh, the WEF, despite being an incredibly sort of anal organization, still hasn't quite gotten the anal engineering right. So I'm still having a few problems in that area. But otherwise, uh, I am perfectly, you know, legitimate and healthy. Thank you very much for asking. Tonight! <clears throat> yes! They said it couldn't happen. The uh, Oxford City Council, they said it wasn't going to happen when they got cornered by... Um, Reporters from uh, UNN, I, was, I believe, shout out to Unity News Network, Sean and all the good people there. The councillor said, point blank, it's not going to happen. Ha! 15-minute cities, checkpoints, locking down parts of Oxford. What a ridiculous idea. Only some kind of conspiracy theorist would believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> of course, only days later, it comes out that Oxford City Council has passed their, basically, climate lockdown test. Everybody on the conspiracy right, I guess, or, you know, as I'm increasingly beginning to think of them, the people who actually know what the fuck is going on, said that, you know, the uh, climate was going to be the next thing after COVID. They couldn't keep COVID going forever. It was, like, of a limited life cycle. And now they're going to, like, switch to climate and everyone is going to have to suffer the same problems. Except, of course, this time it's going to be slightly different. You won't just be locked inside your home. No, 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 no. You will be sort of corralled into a small section of your town or city where everything you could possibly need will be within 15 minutes and there will be gates and checkpoints to stop you from leaving. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, you will be able to leave if you want to. Up to 100 days a year, as long as you apply to the government, of course. And uh, every single time you drive through a checkpoint, uh, they will scan your number plate and you'll get it added onto the 100-day limit. Of course, they haven't mentioned anything about using facial recognition cameras on actual pedestrians yet, but I'm sure it'll be coming. I'm sure, you know, just give them a bit of time. And, of course, the unspoken thing, should any of the, you know, population start getting a little bit rowdy, should they start, oh, I don't know, protesting, or, you know, not trusting the science, or, you know, believing in, uh, well, how, could, how should I say, forbidden thoughts, malinformation, things that are true, but which are harmful. Well, of course, it'd be very, very easy to just lock them all down, wouldn't it? For their own good, of course, for their own good. And it's very, very important that you all understand. And of course, you know, now that I'm living inside a WEF-sponsored body, I have to say this, that um, all of these things, of course, are being done for your own good, for the citizens' own good. It has nothing to do with the imposition of a totalitarian system and an attempt to uh, make sort of a technocratic government that would be much easier for a small select elite at the top to play all of society like some kind of demonic pinball game. No, 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 no. It, it, doing it for you, for for me, for for all of us, you know, right? And you know, and that that's that's definitely, definitely true. And of course, I have to say this. Uh, my heart, of course, is now um, on a Microsoft subscription. So uh, you know, if I don't keep my social credit score up, uh, they may revoke my license to Microsoft Heart. And if you think the conditions of the contract for Microsoft Heart are bad, you should see the ones that they have for Microsoft Penis. Oh my God. Uh, extremely, extremely dense contract. No way around it, I'm afraid, though. <clears throat> if you wants to resurrect, you gots to sign on the dotted line. <clears throat> anyway, let's get into this. From the Epoch Times. Critics, ha, who cares about critics? Call the Oxford 100-day city centre car limit a climate lockdown by default. Wow, it's the Epoch Times, isn't it? Ah, hysterical, hysterical people. A trial to stop most drivers in Oxford from using busy city routes at peak times has been approved by the city council. Well, this was where it starts, isn't it? 
On November 29th, Oxfordshire County Council Cabinet voted in favour of traffic filters, which are strict rules on how often motorists can drive and where they can go in the town centre. The administration says this is to, quote, achieve a sustainable transport system. Sustainable. Ah, oh, I love the word sustainable. It's kind of like chili uh, or garlic uh, for politics, right? You can literally sprinkle it on anything and it just it just makes it taste better. Unless, of course, you're allergic, in which case it may cause you to have a violent reaction. But who really cares about those people, you know? Um... By stopping most motorists from driving through Oxford Centre, which divides the city into six 15-minute neighbourhoods. Hey, everything you need is within 15 minutes. You don't need to go across town, you know. Why would you need to go across town? Why are you not staying at home on your PlayStation, watching Pornhub like a good little surf? In a statement, Councillor Andrew Grant, Oxford Oxfordshire County Council's Cabinet Member for Highways Management, I bet he's going to get a lot of unpopular emails. Currently, our roads are gridlocked, gridlocked with traffic. And this traffic is damaging our economy and our environment. <laughs> and so, of course, the thing to do is just abolish all the traffic. Oxford needs a more sustainable, reliable, and inclusive transport system for everyone. Inclusive? Like, <laughs> people who don't have cars because they can't afford them, because the government have taxed them out of existence? How is that... Oh, I see. Right. So you tag something out of existence and then you make the argument, well, it's not inclusive if we don't include everyone. Yeah. Well, you don't include everyone because you tax it out of existence. Uh, traffic filters are an important tool to deliver a transport plan that works for all. I, I think he misspoke there. I think he means a traffic plan that works for the technocratic elite. Traffic filters are designed to deliver a safer, cleaner and more prosperous place to live, work and visit as long as you don't want to visit anywhere outside of your 15-minute neighborhood, I guess. This is not a scheme to stop private vehicles in the city. Oh, really? It's just a scheme to stop private vehicles in the city. But it's not a scheme to stop private vehicles in the city. Amazing. I think this guy should get a George Orwell Award for doublespeak here. Exemptions and permits available for residents and businesses will make car journeys faster, while also improving alternate transport options such as public transport. 21 Liberal Democrats work in a fair deal alliance with the Green Party and Labour to run Oxfordshire County Council. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. And uh, of course, once Labour get back in, because the UK really only has a two-party system unless reform manages to get off its arse, we were going to see more of this across the whole country. I can't wait. It'll be like uh, everywhere in the UK will be like London. And I'm sure everyone who's been to London recently will think that that's a very, very good thing. And if you don't, you're probably some kind of bigot or conspiracy theorist and probably a racist as well. So shut the fuck up. The plan will be introduced under an experimental traffic regulation order from summer 2023 for a minimum of six months. And under the scheme, private cars will not be allowed without a permit. But all other vehicles, including buses, coaches, taxis, vans, mopeds, motorbikes, and HGVs will be allowed at all time. Oh, I have a feeling that motorbike sales are going to suddenly go up. Good luck getting your kids to school on one, though. Traffic filters will be used to stop drivers without permits from using busy routes at peak times, operating seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So you will still be able to drive around normally at night, for now. Uh, they're still going to track your number plates, though. When the scheme, which, uh, with the scheme enforced during operating hours using automatic number plate recognition cameras, which presumably are going to be put everywhere. Day passes will be available for residents of Oxford and some areas to the immediate west of the city so that vehicle owners can travel through all the traffic filters for up to 100 days per year, equating to an average of two days per week. And uh, if you run out of days per year and it's some kind of emergency, well, I guess you're shit out of luck. Oh, no, no, wait. All you have to do is be rich. Ha! <laughs> Any driver of a vehicle that goes through the traffic filter who is not exempt or using a permit will be charged a penalty of £70. £70 per time. I mean, look, I know with inflation, £70 is uh, worth less and less, but still, that is a lot of money. Of course, if you're extremely rich, it won't be a problem. However, some bigots, racists, conspiracy theorists, and, you know, the kind of people who should probably be purged from society are not on board with this. Shame, shame, 
Shame on them. Environmentalism skeptic Ben Pyle. Oh, well, there you go. Why are you, why are you even listening to this person? He's an environmentalism skeptic. Oh, are these people even allowed to breathe? Don't they breathe out carbon dioxide? Shame, shame. Co-founder of the Climate Resistance blog told the Epoch Times in a statement by email, what the significantly green, leftoid, woke, remain, and wealthy Oxford is discovering is that there are no drop-in replacements for the things its industries, small businesses, and lifestyles have depended on. Come on, do you really need a lifestyle? Do you really need businesses? You know, right? Like, you know, have you considered um, being poor? Have you considered owning nothing? and being happy under threat of duress. Uh, He said that Oxford has chosen itself to be the subject of a suicidal experiment, adding that everyone I speak to hates it. Yes, indeed, and the uh, council is well aware that everybody hates it. Uh, They basically said in a statement that they're going to do it anyway, regardless of whether people want it or not, which, of course, is a fine sentiment to have in a democracy. (laughs) Of course, it's not a democracy uh, by definition. I mean, I don't know if uh, many people realize this, but if you do something that is massively unpopular, that is not democracy. But, you know, hey, it sounds good, so we're doing it, right? Um, Each of them tells me about businesses that have closed or how divisive its green schemes are. Look, you see, right? The COVID lockdowns did not kill all of the small businesses, right? And it's very, very crucial that they all die so that people have no reason to leave the house uh, and everything that they want can be delivered by Amazon. And then once central bank digital currencies come in, of course, everything that you buy, you know, will be like tracked and the central bank digital currency that you have will only be able to be spent on certain items. So they will have basically complete control of the economy for everyone's good, for everyone's good. I mean, they're really, they're doing it for you. And I hope you better be grateful. Pyle pointed to a piece that he had written in 2020 in which he said that the COVID-19 was a frightening dress rehearsal of the climate agenda and that green pundits marveled at the clean clean air while ignoring the boarded up shops, bars, restaurants, and cafes that may never reopen. Yes, well, again, all of those things, shops, bars, restaurants, and cafes involve people moving around, outside, having personal contact, speaking face-to-face. And of course, the problem with speaking face-to-face is that uh, there's no record of it. Uh, These communications can't be intercepted unless they put microphones everywhere. I'm sure they're working on it. I'm sure they're working on it. And as a result, people could say, you know, bad things. And as of course, everybody knows, speech leads to violence. If, uh, you know, it's very, very simple. If you cut out everybody's tongues, there would be no violence. I mean, look, it, it makes perfect sense if you think about it, right? If you want to remove all violence, all you have to do is basically like ensure that no one can speak ever. And boom, violence solved. I'm sure I'm sure that's that's how it works, right? Um, Lewis Perry, the director of Car26, an organization that is campaigning for the referendum on net zero, which is probably never going to happen unless reform get in, and a pause in carbon-related regulations, told the Epoch Times that she believes the Oxford scheme is a climate lockdown by default. Indeed, it is. We think this is one small step towards just just complete dystopia, using climate and net zero as an excuse as per usual. When rules and regulations are brought in to restrict people, they never actually use the real reason to start off. It's always public health, or in this case, saving the planet. A very astute observation there. Indeed. Anyone who studied like history would know this. That's how they get it in. Because no one is going to go along with a policy if you basically say, oh, you know, we want to do it because we want more power, we want more control, and we want to make government's life easier. No, they say they're doing it for you. For the... Uh, Plebe, the citizen, the servant, the serf, the respected stakeholder in our society. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> Car 26 recently commissioned a YouGov poll that found that a desire for a referendum on net zero is popular among the public. Oh, let's have a look. Apparently it is popular. Over 60% of the UK wants a referendum, in, referendum on net zero. And this is a poll from... YouGov and YouGov, of course, who are notoriously biased uh, in the direction of the global elites, means that in all likelihood, the real figures are much higher than 60%. It could be as high as 80%, or as YouGov likes to say, exactly 72% of people support the thing that we want them to support. I suspect that this is probably a move by the government 
to say that, yes, 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 we know there's widespread resistance, but, you know, we'll start shaving it down. We'll start shaving it down. You know, they'll release another one in like, you know, a few months that says, oh, you know, it's it's come down to 55. And then they'll release like another one saying, oh, it's come down to 50. And then once it's under 50, they'll be able to basically say, oh, well, look, we don't need a referendum, right? I mean, you know, there's no need for it. We just did a poll. Not even 50% of people want a referendum on whether the government should literally control every single aspect of their lives based on the rationale that by doing so, they're going to change the fucking weather. Might I add, right, that um, it is currently fucking freezing in London at the moment, right? It's going to be like the coldest winter in like God knows how long. Um, I, I, I thought it was global warming, bros. Uh, climate bros, can you... Can you explain? I, I, I was told for decades uh, we were all going to die from, uh, from global warming. Why is it so goddamn cold? Is it, is it one of these paradoxical effects where, you know, by the planet heating, it, it also gets colder? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a climate scientist. So obviously, you know, I, I can't, I just, I, I probably need to do like, you know, six years of uh, brainwashing. I, I mean, studying at university to fully understand the implications of this, you know. <clears throat> anyway, back to the Epoch Times article. This is all about restriction and control, said Perry. Yes, indeed, it is good, sir. If you've got a young mum who wants to get her kid to school and it happens to be in a different zone to the one that she's in, she would have to go outside the city, go around the circular side outside to drive into the kid's nursery, adding, what, about an hour to get to their journey. Don't worry. Don't worry, mate. Soon, all schools will be online and via remote learning. Kids will probably be wearing their masks at home. And the quality of education will keep on decreasing until you essentially have a compliant, stupid mass that uh, cannot reason at all and uh, make all of their decisions based upon irrational feelings. Those feelings, of course, which will be governed by state-sanctioned media, right? And, you know... And people think that's a bad thing, right? Have you considered how much easier it would make the populace to control? Honestly, I, you know, one of the big problems I have with the freedom movement is, um, you know, they're always asking, you know, who are the elites, but never how are the elites. They, they never try and see it from the elites side. You know what I mean? They just want to reduce you into ab abject slavery and control you. You know what I mean, right? And, you know, they have very, very good reasons for doing so, you know, to make their jobs easier and make them feel like medieval kings. And look, who doesn't want to feel like a medieval king, right? I mean, you know, so look, you know, you really, you know, I, I think, I think really we should like lay off these people and, and just, and just realize that uh, millions may die, right? But that is a sacrifice that they are willing to make on your behalf. You don't need any feedback into this decision. They know much better than you. You know how they know much better than you? They're in control. God obviously put them there <laughs> just because they got there through crooked means doesn't mean that they're not in control, you know, and decides, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> they love that part. So Hura Plummer, campaign director for Oxfordshire Livable Streets, which supported the scheme, said that Oxfordshire is a leading county, is leading the country in doing this and will leave a lasting legacy. Yeah, I bet it will. I bet it fucking will. When the freedom loving people write the history of this period of England, they will look back to crap like this and people like this as the point where we all entered like a fucking totalitarian state. I can see it now. <laughs> you know, 2022 was the year when the regime really stepped up. Oh my God. The official analysis of the scheme found that it will mean 35% less traffic, road casualties down 9%, rush hour buses running 15% quicker, and air pollution down at 91% of locations. This will save lives and make our city more pleasant now for future generations. What about the economic impacts? Fuck it. I, I love this. This is basically the way these people are doing all policy now. They just promote like this sort of like fluffy, positive sounding bullshit, and they just don't even speak about the negative impacts. And then if someone asks them about the negative impacts, they just go be like, oh, what? You don't care about the climate? What? You don't care about pollution? Oh, you don't care about traffic accidents? No, no. I mean, a little. But, you know, everything must be in proportion. This is getting fucking ridiculous. An Oxfordshire County Council spokesman told the Epoch Times by email, Traffic filters are designed to reduce traffic levels across the city, making bus journeys quicker and more reliable, and walking and cycling safer and more attractive. Yes, yes, walking and cycling are extremely attractive at the moment, for example, when it's like basically, I don't know how cold it is, I think it's like minus two, 
outside at the moment. Walking and cycling are very, very, very attractive. This is fucking bullshit. Traffic filters have been part of Oxford Transport Strategy since 2015 and are a key tool to reduce traffic congestion in Oxford. Well, there you go. There you go. They have spoken. Now, just to end this, I'd like to show you something. <clears throat> this is the Climate Committee report from the UK Parliament. I believe this is from the House of Lords. And uh, I just want you to take a look at this graph, right? Now, this at the moment is the 2019 uh, carbon consumption, right? Per person in the UK, right? 8.5. Canada is 14.2. Canada bros, living it up on the hog, right? But down here, down here, this little, this little part, right? This is the very, very important part. What this means is that by 2030, right, they want to get down to 2.5 tons of CO2 per person per year, right, which will be in the UK a cut of 75%. And by 2050, they want to get down to 0 0.7, which will be a cut of 90, over 90%, something like 92%. This is going to literally impoverish everyone. They're never going to get to 2050. Everything is going to collapse into a heap by then. But just the fact that they are essentially aiming for carbon footprints that, you know, I, I, they don't even say what countries are currently using this kind of carbon footprint. But my guess would be sub-Saharan Africa or, you know, third world countries, sorry, developing nations, right, that have like literally nothing. This is the impoverishment of the first world in front of your eyes. But hey, you know, it's not all bad, right? You know, you'll get to live in the pod. I hear that uh, there are several new tasty varieties of bugs being gene engineered as we speak. You'll get to meet lots of new interesting people in the gulag, right? You know, if you live in a house by yourself, well, you're, the government will assign you some new refugee roommates. You'll get to experience diversity and culture from all over the world at your expense. So, you know, lots to look forward to. Anyway. If you enjoyed this video, please, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe. If you are watching this on Rumble, we really need 100 subs on Rumble so that we can live stream because live streaming on YouTube is freaking terrible. They uh, they struck one of my live streams for copyright because I dared to show, like, some Chinese propaganda of the World Cup. I hate it. So please uh, subscribe. Linky in the description. I've got, like, a link tree thing now. It's, it's all very, very, very fancy. Uh, and we will be live streaming uh, this Saturday night, uh, either on Happening TV or on uh, the News Fist YouTube channel. I'm not sure which one yet. Good night.